Hey there boys and girls, my name is Kyle, better known on YouTube as Blendcraft, and welcome to a beginner's guide to game development. In today's episode, we'll be covering the basics of exporting models from Blender into Unity. Speaking of which, the required resources for this episode will be Blender, which you can get at blender.org, and Unity, which you can get at unity3d.com. To kickstart this tutorial, I'm going to be in Blender. If you don't already have a basic cube, you can easily add one by hitting space, typing cube, hit enter, now you're good to go. To get the cube out of Blender, we want to export it as a .fbx. To do this, you go to File, Export, click FBX. Now, if you've ever exported an FBX from Blender, you'll know that there's some screwy stuff that goes on when you import it into Unity. There's actually a fix for this. All I have to do is check the Experimental Apply Transforms option, and it'll fix the rotation and scale issues. Now, if you're curious as to why there's these issues, it's because Blender is a free and open source software, but the .fbx file format is actually owned by Autodesk, and their license conflicts with it, so it can't be included in the public domain. Luckily for us, Alexander Glesser has essentially been reverse engineering the .fbx format based on the FBX's free SDK. Thanks to him, Blender has been offering this public domain FBX format since about 2013. As for the rest of the settings, everything's fine. You can uncheck or check whatever you feel like you need to do. Now if we switch into Unity, we can import our asset. I already have a project and a file open, so I'm ready to import. I'm going to right click in my assets folder, click import asset, work my way to my desktop and grab my cube.fbx file. Now there is an alternate way to import. If you want to use your file browser, you can have your assets folder open and then just drag in your .fbx file. Then when you switch back into UD, it'll automatically import for you. Now if you drop our game object into the scene, you'll see that everything's perfect and we're ready to go. I prefer to always create an empty object and then assign the game object or the model that I imported as a child but I only do this if the object that I'm building is going to have some sort of interaction with the user. I like to keep things organized and structured within the hierarchy this way. If it's just going to be something that's going to be static in the scene, you don't need to worry about this. However, if the player is going to have some sort of interaction with it, for example, if this was a player object and they were controlling this object, I'm going to show you my general workflow and structure. We already have our parent-child structure right here. I'm going to rename the parent to player, and on this player object, this is where I would add any scripts that I need. For example, I could add a script called player controller. Now for the child object, I would rename this one to player underscore model, and then I would turn off anything I don't need in the inspector, and I would make this basically just a model renderer. Now for example, if we wanted to add collisions to our player, I would create a new empty object, make sure it's a child of my player object, I would add in any collision boxes that I need, and then I would rename this object to player underscore collision. And that's basically the object structure I like to set up. If you want to add additional things, such as maybe a particle system that would also go underneath player, and then you could just call it player underscore particles or however you want to name things out. But basically the main empty object is the based player object and then everything else just kind of goes within it. And then it's usually player or object name underscore and then whatever specifically that thing is. This isn't something you have to do, but it makes sense to me and it helps me keep everything organized. Now, if you're working with the .fbx and let's say you made a modification to your model, it's actually really easy to update. So if we go back into Blender, I make a change, export it out and export it out using the same name. If I then open up my file browser, go into the assets folder for my project, drag in my new file and then confirm the overwrite. When I switch back into Unity, it'll automatically re-import for me. If it doesn't, you can right click your model in the assets folder and click re-import, but it should redo it for you. That's about it for this tutorial. I wasn't going to do any crazy modeling or texturing. I want to keep things simple, short, and easy. I'll cover those in later videos. Hopefully this was easier to follow. Thank you to everyone who replied to my previous version with all the handy tips and tricks. If you have any questions or tutorial suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. As always, my name is Kyle. You just learned something cool today, and I'll see you next time.